The Lord be with you. And also with you. Good morning, everyone. A very warm welcome to the Kilgariff Union of Parishes. My name's Kingsley Sutton, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to our live stream service here this morning from West Cork. I'm joined by Gordon Coombs, as you can see on the screen here with you. And uh, hopefully we will help you to really engage your faith with the true and living God. I'm just going to go back to my screen share now, and hopefully you'll be able to see as well as hear all that's happening. And if I can move that along now, we just to remind you that we're now into the third Sunday in Lent. And the theme of our service today is all about commandments to promises. And hopefully this will become clear as we go along. But first of all, this morning, as promised, we have a message from our bishop, Bishop Paul. And this is in connection with confirmation. And it's to, it's all, to us all, although it does primarily involve those who were preparing for confirmation last year, but their preparations had to stop. Uh, because of the pandemic. But let's listen to this message from Paul. And also we've got a lovely hymn that uh, is going to be uh, our opening hymn that's going to be at the end of this video clip as well. So let's listen to what Bishop Paul has to say to us today. confirmation in 2020 met with me in Douglas. Since then I wrote to you on the day that was meant to be your confirmation day. Now, as well as you, we have a new group of young people who should be making plans for their confirmation this year. There certainly will be a lot of confirmations to do when we are eventually free to do. In the meantime, today, one year on, I wanted to reach out to you to say that you are not forgotten. You are often in my prayers here in the chapel in my home. The last year in the pandemic had been unknown territory for us all. And again and again, I've been trying to figure out how I would go about hosting your confirmation service. The problem is that they're among the biggest gatherings in parish churches of the diocese every year. And they are times when families travel from all around the world to be together to celebrate with you. All of this has made pressing on impossible, and that will, I'm afraid, be the case for some time yet. The past year and these times are very tough for lots of people. But your age group has had an especially tough time. Remote learning at home, not getting into school, not being able to meet up with your friends, in clubs, drama, choirs, music groups, sports, and so much more. The places you would usually go to hang out with friends and to make new ones, these have all been closed. But I do want to pay tribute to your youth and club leaders, choir directors, your families, your schools and teachers for all the great efforts they've been making to keep in touch with you and to do some things online. Today I have two messages for you. First, you are not forgotten. And I look forward to the time, I can't say when it will be, when I'll be able to meet you for confirmation. And second, while this is a lonely experience, you are not alone. We're all in the same boat. It's not easy at times, but keep talking to the people around you and don't be afraid to talk about how you are feeling. As Christians, we believe that God is with us. All this uncertainty and not knowing is part of what it means to be human, but to say the least, these times are more challenging than usual for everyone. St. Paul called this seeing 
in a mirror dimly. One rough translation of the Bible puts it this way. We don't yet see things clearly. We're squinting in a fog, peering through a mist, but it won't be long before the weather clears and the sun shines bright. We'll see it all then, see it all as clearly as God sees us, knowing him directly, just as he knows us. To honor you and to salute all the efforts you've been making, I'd like you to join now the young people of St. Finbar's Cathedral in the hymn we were learning to sing for your confirmation service. Join in and try not to be too distracted by the photos of our happy gathering last year. I will really miss not meeting you all this year for my confirmation morning in Douglas with those who are thinking of confirmation. <laughs>
All are indeed welcome, and it's lovely to have you here with us today. We're going to return to Bishop Paul at the end of our service, uh, but for now we will continue with our service of morning prayer, and let me introduce this service. Beloved in Christ, we are come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of the Spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord, who is full of compassion, and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed. Through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that has passed and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. O oh God, you have heard these words of our confession. May we in turn hear your words of compassion, because you love us and you forgive us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so as forgiven <clears throat> children, we say, O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth will proclaim your praise. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. And our Old Testament reading this morning is from Exodus chapter 20 and Gordon's going to read it for us. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself any idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them, or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the inequity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honour your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbour. You shall not covet your neighbour's house. You shall not covet your neighbour's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbour. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
And our psalm today is psalm number 19, and it's a wonderful psalm. And, well, let's hear it. The heavens are telling the glory of God. And the firmament proclaims his handiwork. One day pours out its song to another. And one night unfolds knowledge to another. They have neither speech nor language. And their voices are not heard. Yet their sound has gone out into all lands. And their words to the ends of the world. And them has he set a tabernacle for the sun. That comes forth as a bridegroom out of his chamber. And rejoices as a champion to run his course. It goes forth from the end of the heavens and runs to the very end again. And there is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right and rejoice the heart. The commandments of the Lord, the commandment of the Lord is pure and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey, dripping from the honeycomb. By them also is your servant taught. And in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often they offend? O oh, cleanse, oh, cleanse me from my secret faults. Keep your servant also from presumptuous sins, lest they get dominion over me. So shall I be undefiled and innocent of great offence. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and, and my and redeemer. redeemer. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And that psalm which links, this, uh, links in with the heavens, it also links in with the commandments and how that there's great joy in keeping the Lord's commands. That will be coming up in our address later. But our New Testament reading this morning is from Romans chapter 4. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And Lord, we pray that you would take these words of scripture and apply them to our hearts and lives by the power of your Holy Spirit. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as I come to my address, I just remind you of last week, we were talking all about faith and the importance of faith and how that we can use the letters of the word faith to remind us of some important truths. F standing for the first things that, well, all this planet was here well before us. And, uh, you know, we have to sort of come to terms with the fact that we're definitely here. First things first. Then we looked at Abraham and discovered that the faith that he had was actually very personal. And the letter I is right in the very middle of faith. And it is a personal thing. And it's meant to help us personally in our lives. 
and we saw T, which resembles the cross, how the cross changes everything. We'll be coming to that, uh, coming to that again in today's service. But also H then, heaven. Yes, heaven is there at the end of faith, but it's also H for here and now, because God has taught us to live in the present and that God's kingdom would come in the present. Just like we pray in the Our Father, the Lord's Prayer, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So heaven's will being done here on earth in the here and now. Well, today we're talking all about commands. I don't know whether you like being told what to do. Uh, it tends to feel a little bit, bit, little bit belittling at times, doesn't it? Being told what to do, or, or maybe you're a person who, who takes instruction very easily, and I think you're to be admired for that. But perhaps a, a telltale sign as to how good we are at obeying commands might be this particular sign here, uh, the 50 kilometer uh, speed limit sign. This is at the top of Hospital Hill here in Clonakilty. I'm not too sure what speed that car was going at, but uh, sometimes we pretend to ourselves that we aren't going as fast as we actually are. And uh, yeah, they put up signs telling us what speed we're doing in real time as well to remind us. Because yeah, it's not easy, is it, to always obey the commands? And in this case, of course, we're talking about the rules of the road. And yet we know in our hearts that really the rules of the road are there for our own good. They're there to protect everyone. And we would be a wise person to adhere to all the rules of the road. So if you're a driver, are you a, a foolish driver or are you a wise driver? And I think that's a lot to do with how well you regard the rules of the road. Well, a couple of years ago, the uh, Gardaí down abandoned staged a traffic accident. And you can see how it's being viewed by uh, pupils from the local schools outside of Bandon. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty horrific looking thing watching or seeing an accident. Now, this was just a staged accident. No one got actually hurt in this. But it's a terrible thing when road accidents happen. And you wish, you know, you could just go back in time and just think if I'd only slowed down or if I'd only seen, if I'd only checked twice and, and you, you regret, you can end up with terrible regrets, particularly if someone's badly hurt or worse still killed. It, it's absolutely dreadful. And then you think back to yourself, was I wise or was I foolish? And surely it's better to be a wise driver and to consider the rules of the road. And that's why they're there, aren't they? Well, the Ten Commandments are a bit like the rules of life, not the rules of the road, but the rules of life. And they're here to give us instruction on how best to live a life which is protected from all harm and danger. And we would be wise to follow these rules or these commandments that are there for our own good. Now, Remembering 10 things is never very easy, is it? Um, well, this little chart here perhaps helps us. Number one, meaning, yeah, there's only one God, so therefore we worship the one and true God. Number two in this picture is drawn as, a, as an animal to remind us that God does not want any idols in our lives. Number three is over on its side, making the shape of a mouth, telling us not to take the name of the Lord our God in vain. Number four is made into the shape of a cross to remember to keep the Sabbath day holy. Number five has two places in it to fit a, a mom and a dad, and that reminds us to honor our parents. Number six is in the shape of a gun saying, do not kill. Number seven, well, it reaches up to make the apex of an A, which reminds us no adultery. Number eight is like the, the shackles of uh, handcuffs telling us not to steal. Number nine, you laugh at this one here, not, not to lie, our bear false witness, and the nine is made into the image of a bear. And then number 10 is like the first letters of do not covet. So there are 10 commands, and wouldn't it be great if we were told, well, just attempt three of them. That, that would be very helpful, wouldn't it? But actually, it wouldn't. We need to keep them all. Just like the rules of the road, we can't just say to the guard as he steps on the, on the side of the road, you know, I keep every other rule. I just was speeding today, but, but I was keeping all the other rules. I, I had both my hands on the steering wheel. 
No, that wouldn't really work. We're meant to keep all the rules of the road. So it's about being foolish or it's about being wise. Which are you and I going to be? Well, our New Testament reading today talks about the foolishness of God. The foolishness that is the cross. It seems like something nearly ridiculous that God would even set up like a deliberate car crash for Jesus, that God would choose for Jesus to die on a cross. It just seems so bizarre. It seems so foolish. And yet in our scriptures today, we see how God turned it out to be a lot wiser for us than we might have thought. And Paul says we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those who are called, both Jew and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. There's something in the wisdom of the cross that perhaps we have not seen before. Let me explain it to you like this. All lawlessness must be put to an end. Uh, we can't have lawlessness going on forever and ever. And this is why God has determined that, that sin and all those bad things, they need to come to an end. They need to die. And the way to end something is for it to die. And so Jesus became sin for us on the cross, and he died so that we wouldn't have to die. And Paul proclaimed this, that Jesus died in our place so that we might live. He took our place on the cross. And for those who believe this, which may seem like foolishness, it turns out to be the wisest thing to do because it leads to salvation. And so we see how the Ten Commandments will now become something different to us. They become like the Ten Promises. How do I understand this or explain this? It's all because of God's love for us. What other God has ever gone out of his way to die for us, to take our place on the cross? It's God's love for us that we see through the cross. It may seem foolish, but we see love. And because God loves us so much, we're not going to make a, an idol out of anything else. I'm not going to love something that, that takes the place of God when God loves me so, so much. I shall hold God's name reverently. So instead of it being like, you shall not do this, it becomes a promise. You shall hold God's name reverently because he's done so much for us. On, and a promise is that I shall honor people like my parents. I shall honor those around us. Why? Because they're God's people. They're made in the image of God. And I can show my love for God by showing my love for people. And so as I conclude my thought with you today, I go back to the speed limits. Yes, it's kind of a, an indication of, of how good we are at obeying commands. But I often think to myself, and I share this with others too, that every time we break the speed limit, are we doing that the, the foolish thing or the wise thing? Well, I think the answer is kind of obvious there. But also, are we loving our neighbor? Are we loving the people in the community through which we are driving? Are we showing them respect? Are we honoring them by honoring their speed limits? It's just a simple thought I know but if it helps to protect life, that's definitely a good thing. And that is a God thing. God wants to protect life and to save us from all harm. And that's what brings us back to faith. It's for the present. It's for the here and now. It's the first things. It's what Abraham taught us. It's an eye. It's the personal faith. It's all about the cross where we see the love of God which changes everything and changes our response towards God. And yes, through the cross, there, also, there is also the hope of salvation, the hope of heaven. And heaven is for the here and now as well. Let's just bow our heads in prayer for a, thought, uh, a prayer now. Lord Jesus, thank you that you love us so much, that you died for us on the cross. Help us to appreciate again this Lent, all that you've done for us. 
help us to show our love for you by adhering to your commandments that are not burdensome, but are there to help and protect us and to protect us from all harm and danger. Help us to live your way, to guard our lives, and so fulfill the promises that you have made for us and we have made to you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so we come to our, our hymn, O oh Jesus, I have promised. And I hope as you listen to the words of this song, that will really mean something to you personally as you reaffirm your promises to God. be with you and also with you let us pray lord have mercy christ have mercy lord have mercy our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Merciful Lord, grant your people grace to withstand the temptations mm -hmm. of the world, the flesh and the devil, 
and with pure hearts and minds to follow you, the only God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we continue with our prayers and intercessions. Gracious God, fountain of all wisdom, we pray for your church across all denominations, for Bishop Paul, and for those who teach and guard the faith. And we pray your blessing and all those who are considering confirmation of the preparation for confirmation lessons, uh, uh, they're all on hold at the moment. We pray that you would be continuing to grow our young people in their faith, even through a time like this. May the word of Christ dwell richly in our hearts and knit us together in the bond of your love. Hear us. Hear us, good Lord. We pray for the leaders of the nations and for all those in authority under them. And today, Lord, just pray for our, we just lift you um, the rollout of the vaccine for COVID-19, Lord. We pray that no country will be left behind, Lord, that, that all, all vaccines will be distributed fairly and equally throughout the world. Give our leaders, Lord, the gift of your wisdom and a right discernment in all things. Hear us. Hear us, good Lord. We pray for our towns and cities, for those who live and work in our community. Speak your word of peace in our midst and help us to serve one another as Christ served us. Hear us. Hear us, good Lord. We pray for those who do not believe, and yet who long to know you, the very word of life. And Lord, help us all to encourage and to, um, to encourage and um, bring along all those who strive and want to know you. Help us to be compassionate towards them in all we do and say. Open all our ears to hear your voice and open all our hearts to the knowledge of your love in Jesus Christ. Hear us. Hear us, good Lord. And we pray for those bowed down with grief and sickness. We lift before God those who are on our hearts at this time, asking that God will be very close to them and helping them through this very difficult time, be it a time of fear or sadness. May your living word bring comfort and healing to all those in need. Hear us. Hear us, good Lord. We give thanks for all those who have died in the faith of Christ. And we rejoice with all your saints, trusting in the promise of your word fulfilled. Hear us. Hear us, good Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, it's hard to believe the year is running on and next week is uh, Mother's Day. And if you would like, uh, putting this challenge out to you all, would you please send me in a photograph of your mum and if possible, with daffodils. So she can have them in her hands or she can be standing beside daffodils or something like that. But it'd be lovely to put up a few uh, photos of our mums on screen for our services next Sunday. And if you'd like to take part in this, uh, please send in your photos by email to the address given there, rev.suttton at gmail.com, revsutton at gmail.com. So hopefully we'll have lots of photos to show you next week. To remind you that the diocesan magazine is published every month and those who have yet to pay their subscription would they please send that in to Helen Kingston as soon as possible. 
every Lent we do a joint collection for CMSI, that's CMS Ireland, and also the Leprosy Mission, which is known as the Mission to End Leprosy Now. And just to encourage you to be gathering up, collecting money for these charities, and we hope to gather that in at the end of Easter. Little treasures, I'll be posting a video tomorrow morning, and it's uh, of the crows that are building nests here at Hospital Hill. It's a lovely little video, and a matter of fact, I actually made it a memory of a man called Joe Shorten, who used to be a resident at the hospital for many, many years. He passed away back in uh, 2017, but he always loved the crows, and uh, I made that little video in his memory. And uh, anyway, that, that'll be posted on this Facebook page tomorrow morning. And please do share it with your friends and your family as we remember what the crows are doing this time of the year. It really is amazing, it really is. This Wednesday, as in every Wednesday in Lent, we've been having a weekly service on Zoom at 8.30. And if you would like to join in, you can send that again, uh, send a request to join in through email, so it's rev.sutton at gmail.com again if you would like to link in with us. Also, a reminder from Bishop Paul that about the new Bishop's Pastoral Care Fund that's been launched uh, here in the diocese, and it's to the relief of, of poverty, the advancement of education and religion, and other purposes that have benefited the community under the Section 311 of the Charities Act 2009. It's a very worthwhile a charity that the bishop is trying to found. If you would like to be a founder member, uh, please get in touch with me or go directly to the bishop and he'd be able to sort that out. Well, we're going to finish. Uh, well, first of all, I'll just say uh, a farewell from uh, Gordon and from me. Uh, thank you for joining us. We've really appreciated having you here with us. Uh, but as we say goodbye, we're going to uh, go back to our share screen because I'd like to finish, well, I'm going to let, give the Bishop the final word to our service here this morning. Let us finish in a moment with a prayer. And I like most days myself, ever since. I'm just going to turn the volume up a little bit there. It's my own confirmation to use a version of the prayer that is said, in the confirmation service by the bishop. And I invite you to use it too. Be with me, Lord, with your heavenly grace, that I may continue to be yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until I come to your eternal kingdom. Amen. May God, who has given you the desire to follow Christ, give you also strength to continue in the way. Amen. Until next time, God bless you. Bye, everybody.